Hey guys, I'm sitting here with Decipher Down. How are you guys doing? Good. Hey, doing well. Good, good. Thank you for joining me today. Um, so let's talk about some things that are going on right now. Let's talk about your new album, Crash, that came out in May. Uh, what are some of the things that are going on with that album? How are audiences taking to it? Seem to be receiving it. Yeah. Really yeah. Well, yeah. Seems like you know we've you know we've had the transition of you know me coming into the band uh, in November and um, you know people having to either. I guess one of two things, either walk away from DD or, <laughs> or, or, or embrace us. Yeah, and it yeah. seems like I think, you I think people have really connected well with it because, you know, the the purpose behind the songs and in, in our style and whatnot is, uh, is not, has not changed. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, people have been uh, receiving it well, and we're really excited about the future for it. Now, you said the purpose in your style you feel like hasn't changed, but do you feel like there is a difference between this album and your previous one? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like it's more mature, or um, what is the underlying message in Crash? It's just hope. I mean, yeah, there's just yeah. all the, uh, I mean, there's stories that we tell pretty much with all the lyrics, and it's just things that have happened to us or people around us, and um, um, it's it's very honest, you know, we don't sit down and try to, hey, let's let's see how many times we can say Jesus in this song to appeal to, you know, whatever. It's like, let's actually sing about something that everybody deals with or might struggle with and that, you know, they can grab a hold of as well. So, I mean, it's everything from addiction mm -hmm. to, um, you know, just falling away from God. And um, so, you know, it's, I mean, like everybody said, I think people have really connected with it. I think it's definitely more of a, a mature, I mean, we've been touring for a few years on End of Grey, the first record, and so you learn a lot. You learn a lot doing that, mm -hmm. and um, you you should mature, hopefully, as musicians and as people and as Christians. So, so what are? I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just saying that you definitely learn while you're out on the road and while you're seeing uh, a lot of other bands out there, and you learn how to uh, to create songs that are going to be able to connect with people the first time they hear them, and and. Uh, just as musicians, you know, we've been able to uh, to grow in that, you know. So we've uh, been fortunate to have a second record. So, what are some of the pros and cons about touring that you guys enjoy or don't enjoy? <laughs> Long rides are yes, painful. Not that great. But <laughs> <laughs> Bonding time. Yeah, right. <laughs> twenty or thirty minutes on stage is probably the best part, but you know, the other twenty-four hours is. <laughs> it's some very long drives. Well, we have some moments. The but, traveling yeah. side of it always makes it interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, missing the family is definitely yeah, a low yeah. low mm -hmm. part of it. Um, meeting people is great. Too. Yeah, yeah, meeting absolutely. people, yeah. seeing people's lives and hearts, you know, affected or changed in some way of whatever God's allowed us to do musically. It's it's really yeah. it's pretty empowering for us. So with just the general uh, music industry, you have the Christian music genre and secular music. Do you have any opinions on um, how Christian music has evolved today when compared to uh, the secular music industry? That's such a weird... Yeah. It's kind of all the same. And we, yeah, we, used, to, we mm -hmm. used to see just the, the vision of it all until right. we actually started playing both sides. And then it was like, you know, ever, it's, everybody's the same, you know? I mean, there's people that love Jesus and people that don't. So why do we keep you know, putting everybody over here and putting everybody over here in this box. And so, I mean, you know, we've, we've realized that everywhere you go, there's going to be people that need Jesus. It's like, just because you're in the Christian market doesn't mean that you're playing to a ton of Christians, you know. It's like, yeah. we want to make an impact, so let's just go into the mainstream market. Well, there's still a lot of people hurting in the Christian world as well. Mm -hmm. So the same people are in churches that are, you know, in a bar or a club, yeah. you know, so right. it's... It's pretty much an even playing field for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. people that are seeking, you know, hope, people that are seeking truth, um, all those just, you know, things that we all, you know, have a need for in our, in our own just human nature. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter what wall is surrounding you, you know, if it has a steeple or not, or if it has a bar, you know, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, you know we've all really uh, grasped that, you know, we've really seen that, mm -hmm. that work. Um, it's just, you know, meet people where they're at, you know, and express our faith and, and uh, show them the grace that God, you know, has for them and the purpose He has for them. So that's what we do. Yeah. So let's talk about your fans. You have a huge fan base. What do you do, What do you guys do to give back to your fans? You keep in touch with them on the internet, things like that. 
Yeah. Twitter. <laughs> We're getting used to that. Let's just do that. <laughs> oh. We're still figuring that one out. So what can one expect when they go to one of your concerts? Tell me about the experience. High energy rock and roll. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's definitely a part yeah. of it. Yeah. Now, are people ever surprised when they hear your music? Oh, okay. I didn't really realize that you guys were a Christian brand. Uh, Christian sometimes, band or sometimes, like yeah. That. That's. I mean, and how do you respond to that? It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, you don't want them. It's like, I mean, it's cool you, that they yeah. Don't get to judge you. Exactly. Because a lot of people, when they hear a Christian band, you know, they just kind of, uh, right. you know, I did the same thing when I was a kid, you know. Right. You want people to feel conviction, not condemnation. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so. and. I don't know. I see. I feel like, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, there's people that still, with even P.O.D., they're like, I didn't even know they were a Christian yeah, band after right. they sold six million records. Right. Yeah. But I knew there was something cool and special about their music, and yeah. it spoke to me. So it's yeah. kind of, that's, that's a, awesome. That's a good mm -hmm. compliment for yeah. us, for sure. Yeah. Good. Do you feel like the Christian music industry has changed in the last few years, or it's no, moving I'm in not, a... I think it's... <laughs> I think definitely in the last 15 years, you know, or so, it's gone, it's grown leaps and bounds, I would say. Um, it's, there's no longer that stigma, you know, or at least in most circles that we are, you know, are around, a stigma of like Christian bands and mainstream bands, you know, the Christian bands, just the ones aren't good enough to make it in the mainstream. You know, whereas, you know, now, it's such a blend of market that it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really matter anymore. You know, you just make great music and you, you know, you write songs that, uh, that God's given you that hopefully can lead people to hope and purpose and truth and all the core values that we have, you know, and and you have a lot of bands out there that do it, you know, very well and, and um, you know, and it, they, they're not apologizing, let's put it that way, right. for, for, uh, for being a Christian band, that's for sure. Well, you're obviously affecting a lot of people's lives. Do you have any special stories of maybe any fan mail or people that have approached you on the street, anything like that? There's always encouraging fan mail, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, just when you're, ha and you know, it always seems like when you're having one of those days where you just kind of like, oh God, I mean, I'm so tired of touring, and then you'll get an email where some kid was like, yeah. or some lady, we actually, there was an email about the song Fading that's on the radio, she said that she was, you know, flipping through the radio on the highway, and she heard it, and, and was so, she connected with it in such a huge way, she had to pull over because she was in tears, wow. so it's like hearing stuff like that, I mean, that's what you want. That's what, I mean, why would we want to just go out just to be a cookie cut, cookie cutter Jesus band? You know right. what I mean? It's like, we want to make an impact. And if somebody's connecting with it like that, that's, that's pretty encouraging. You know? That's awesome. I heard that uh, crash kind of leaked out on the internet um, a month or so or earlier before it was supposed to be released. Yeah. What's your response to that? How do you the feel internet. about that? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the internet. Thank yeah. you. All those responsible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and exactly. how do you stay positive? For you. <laughs> how do you stay positive through something like that, just to keep going? And oh, man. you can't I mean, be surprised. Yeah, you can't like let <laughs> stuff like that bother you. I mean, I mean, there's. I, quit. You know, exactly. there's <laughs> I guess they're excited, right? They want yeah. to hear your it's, stuff. I think people, you know, when that whole, you know, downloading, you know, mm -hmm. illegal downloading came out, you know, just not very many years ago, it was such a huge focus on it. But mm -hmm. nowadays, you know, people understand that, and they grasp the idea that, you know, what. If I love this band, I like their ministry, I like their heart, I'm going to go buy the record and support them. Right. And that's that's really what it is. And if they don't buy the record and they don't support it, then there's a good chance that that band, whoever that band is, will not be around, you know, in the future. So, because yeah. it takes a lot of resources and money and and uh, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of people in the food chain, I guess you'd say, when yeah. just one CD is bought. And mm -hmm. so uh, it's not like we're all getting loaded with all kinds of money because we're not. <laughs> so uh, everybody's... Uh, Anybody that thinks that, yeah, you're thinking yeah, wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen anymore. But, yeah. um, you know, so it's just, I mean, we have the same thing too, you know, is that, you know, we'll be driving down the road and a lot of the bands that we even know and we're friends with, but we'll still go out and buy their CD because we want to support yeah. their That's music. Great. So So speaking of um, other bands, who were some of the other groups that influenced you guys maybe growing up or as a group collectively? Chris, maybe you should answer this. Yeah, for <laughs> quite a few. Cartman, no, no. Carmen, Carmen. No, 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 I don't know, man. Any, any, <laughs> any rock. I mean, you know, it's like anything. With this, it was good. I mean, you have to think back in the day. As far as Christian bands, there wasn't that many bands. I mean, everybody was listening to Metallica mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. So it's like, I mean, those. I actually had I mean, a private show with Leonard Skinner yeah. two days ago, wow. which was awesome. Wow. Right here in Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. 
So what makes you guys different than any other group that others may try to say is similar? Uh, well, I mean, everything's been done when it comes to music, yeah. so you're always going to get comparisons to stuff. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, hopefully people can get out of our music that are, has got a lot of soul behind it and there's a lot of passion behind it. Good heavy guitars, you know, and, and just good power vocals, you know, so just the, it's the nuts and bolts of what our sound is. There's nothing fancy, there's nothing crazy going on. It's just... There's always going to be people that say it's nothing different, and yeah. those are the people right. that you can't ever please, really please <laughs> or let them get to you. It's like... This is who we are, and we feel there's no other decipher down, so, you know. So where do you see the group in about five years, seven years? Who knows? <laughs> you know, we've been, we've gone down such a crazy road just in the last few years. Um, you know, hopefully we'll still be uh, be doing this and writing music and mm -hmm. making an impact on our culture. And, and uh, I think our biggest prayer, though, is just to be used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's... Um, whatever capacity that is and we're just kind of leave it in God's hands because there's so much hype behind a lot of things and you just kind of don't want to get your hopes in different directions and just uh, if, we're, if we're focusing on just being used and using the platform that God has for us then I think we'll be satisfied. Just going to ride that wave. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> well thanks for coming to hang out with me today. Um, you guys are definitely as you said making a huge impact love your music so uh great well if you guys want to learn more about decipher down make sure you check out our website where you can see an extended version of this interview videos and a whole lot more but unfortunately that's it for this week's episode of ictus eq but make sure you tune in next week where we promise to have a whole lot more music videos for you and i'll leave you with just one more with carry me down from demon hunter i'm mari white and i'll see you guys next week <laughs>